Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. We have a beautiful 80 degrees outside here and today we're solving a problem a lot of students find it as a headache, which I don't blame you. And the particular problem involves trig identity and exact value problem. I'm hoping this clip will be the last one you have to watch so you can figure out how to do this one forever. I know forever is a long word, but hey, we gotta try and start somewhere. Let's get started by showing you how to do cosine 240 because the problem or the process is identical, solving the exact value problems. Okay, now 240 is all the way in third quadrant here. Okay, so in this clip, I'm hoping to give you shortcuts and a couple key points. If you grab those key points, my hope is you never bother with this type of problem anymore. Okay, I'm hoping I'll forever solve this problem. So 240, it goes around counterclockwise all the way and past the horizon x-axis by 60 degrees. Now here's the key point number one. Let's write it out over here. Key number one. You got find reference angle. Okay, reference angle is always, always referred to x-axis. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. I mean, horizon, how horizon, how reference can you get other than horizon? Okay, so horizon says, look, if you take this big large angle, 240, the reference angle is the angle that's less than 90 degrees, which is much more pleasant to work with. And this little triangle is our reference triangle. I'm going to draw it out here. Now, if you can grasp this idea, the rest of the stuff, it's almost too easy to even bother with. Okay, so reference angle, I'm going to call it a reference angle, or R. The strange property is cosine 240 is related to the cosine of reference angle of 60. Okay, how you get a reference angle again? Whatever angle you have, you're going to just cut it out right with reference to horizon. Okay, and whatever is left over, well, of course, 240 minus 60 gives you the, sorry, 280. Let me try again. 240 minus 180 gives the reference angle of 60. Okay, once you got this chunk over, it's almost there. It's kind of like deciding where you're going to take your girlfriend to date. Okay, the first thing you got to decide is you're going to go see a movie or you're going to go to watch the clouds. My husband used to take me watch the clouds being in graduate school we were cheap and we were poor. Anyway, so you decide where the reference angle is first, then you decide if it's a plus or minus. I'm going to teach you a shortcut on how to decide if it how to decide if it's a plus or minus. Okay. Here I'm going to teach you a short cut shortcut. The y value decides the sine angle. Okay. So it's like y sine, or you can even think of it as y sine, y sine the paper. Okay, x value decides the cosine theta, or literally sounds like crossing or cosine. Okay, so in our case, let's take a look. Um, this angle, reference angle, when the 260 ends at this corner over here, both x and y is negative. Okay, so our sign has to be negative. And let's take a look at my calculator over here, and hopefully you can see it. I'm going to push cosine 240. Guess what? It's equal to minus 0 0.5. Where does 0 0.5 come? It's cosine of 60. So the answer is equal to minus 0 0.5. Okay, so that's exactly the same process we're going to do on finding exact value problem. The question that we need to answer here, and then the first one it says, look, we're given a termination point. We don't know what the angle is, but we're giving a termination point is minus 2 and minus 7. 
So you know what? It's right in our third quadrant. Okay. Not having done a problem before, you know, remember what I said? Y sine. So Y value gives you the sine reference. Okay. So let's draw our little triangle again. Now remember always the reference triangle has to go with the uh, horizon. Okay. Don't get tempted to do this angle because this one is going to lead you in trouble big time. Okay. So here's my reference angle, the shaded area over here. Okay. Now with the 2, 7, this is minus 2, this is minus 7. I know this side is 2 and this side is 7. Pythagorean theorem gave me this one is, hopefully I'm done doing this one right, it's 53, uh, 49, uh, 4, that's 53, okay? This one is my reference angle, even though this is the theta, okay? So we were asked to find cosine of theta. Now, doing this step before, it's plus minus cosine reference angle. Let's find what cosine reference angle is. This is pretty easy. Cosine reference angle is just 2 over radical 53. Uh, 53 and not 335. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm too excited. 53. I, can, I hope you can see it. It's ugly 3 here. Now, is it a plus or minus? Remember we said cosine is defined by x value of this termination arm. It's negative. So it answers cosine of theta is equal to negative 2 over 53. Or if you want to rationalize it, it's minus 2 radical 53 over 53. Okay. Now we are also supposed to find secant of theta. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta, which should be pretty easy because we know what a cosine is, right? It's minus radical 53 over 2 secant theta. And then one more. Let's see where I can squeeze it. It's cotangent of theta. Cotangent in this quadrant is always positive. Okay, so it's equal to cotangent of reference angle, which equal to 2 over 7. Okay, so pretty easy to do. Once you know how to find a reference angle, step number one. Step number two is decide if it's a positive or negative. And using that y sine and crossing to remind yourself sine is always decided by y value and so on and so forth. This should be pretty easy. Let's try another example. Example two, where we're given that angle is in quadrant four. That's over here. I'll put a little mark over here. And we're given sine theta is minus three and five. Oh, my graph is a little off chart here. So um, minus 3 and 5. So here's the 3, and this is my angle here. This is 5. Okay, so here's my big angle here, theta. Here's my little reference. And remember again, the reason I put a reference over there is got touched the x axis. You're going to get tired of hearing me saying that. But it's such a critical thing. If you know where the reference angle is, the rest of the stuff is so easy to find out. Okay, it's 3, 4, 5 angle. So let's find out. We need to find secant of theta, which is 1 over cosine of theta. Okay, and then it's 1 over, let's write a plus or minus cosine of reference. I don't know, cosine plus or minus again. Let's do the 1 over plus minus. What's cosine for r? Well, that's easy to find. It's 4 over 5. Okay. And then remember we said y value is um, y sine. y sine of paper, which is saying y gives you the sine theta reference. Okay. And then x gives you the cosine, or you can memorize it or remember it as crossing, kind of like a crossing sign. 
All right, so on our picture over here, x is a positive. So this is equal, equal to 1 over plus sign of 4 over 5, which is saying secant of theta is equal to 5 over 4. That's one of them. Let's find another one. We need to find cotangent of theta. Cotangent of theta is equal to plus or minus cotangent of r. In fourth quadrant, quadrant we have a minus cotangent of r. And once you get there, cotangent of r is pretty easy because we have this reference angle here. Cotangent is 4 over 3. So it's minus 4 over 3. All right, let's try one more problem, and I really, really hope this one explains all the quote-unquote mystery here. It's really not that hard once you get the process done, okay? Now, let's see this one we were given that we're in quadrant 2. Oh, I like quadrant 2. Let's back over here. And we're given cotangent theta is equal to so cotangent of theta, where we're given is equal to minus square root of 55 over 3. All right, we're in second quadrant, so let's get on to my second quadrant over here. Now, this is going to be my reference angle here. Okay, this is my theta, and we're given it's minus 55 over radical 55 and 3, so this is 3. Cotangent is this arm over that arm. So, we were asked to find the sine theta. Here's the theta. Now it's plus or minus, we don't know yet, but it's related to the reference triangle. It's this little triangle. Let's redraw our little reference triangle here. I apologize for my scale of drawing here. Any architecture student would be horrified because this is radical 55 and that's 3. It's way off scale. But anyway, hopefully you can put up with me. 55 plus 9, that's 64, which is equal to 8. Hey, look at that. That's a good number. 8 is a prettier number than radical 55. Anyway, in our second quadrant, I remember we said earlier, y sign the paper, which is y value gives you the sine uh, theta's value, plus or minus. So our y here is a positive. Okay. Sine of r, this is r, is pretty easy. It's 3 over radical 55. Let's make it a little prettier. So it's 3 radical 55 over 55 with a plus sign. All right. Um, hmm. I don't think it's 55. It's 8. Well, it's part of the problem, see? I'm talking to myself, and I sure hope someone out there is listening. So sine theta is 3 over 8. It's not 55. The hypotenuse is actually 8. It's a nicer number. So I'm glad I caught the mistake by myself. I sure hope someone is actually pointing out for me. All right, let's go on. Secant theta is 1 over cosine theta is equal to 1 over plus or minus, we don't know yet, cosine of reference angle. Okay. Cosine, we, don't, we know it's crossing, right? Crossing sign or road crossing sign. That means the x value gives us the cosine r sign. Okay, so over here, x is negative. As you see, my termination angle is negative. So it's 1 over minus sine of cosine r is equal to radical 55 over 8. So it's equal to minus 8 over radical 55. Or let's make it a little prettier. Minus 8 radical 55 over 55. That's the secant theta. Like I said, the, the problem itself, it's not too hard once you know how to solve the problem process-wise. It's important. I think if, if you have time, go back and read at the beginning before we hit example one. And make sure you can understand.